Hey guys, I'm at this hotel. Um, I'm at the Newton Marriott. <clears throat> I got the King. I already have my stuff on it. I got a little extra room, I guess. Not much. I'm in the handicapped one because the Kings all are for handicapped. So that means that my bathroom is um, extra large to accommodate a wheelchair and doesn't have a have a um, tub that has this stand up shower. See, but you in in the end you get a much larger bathroom, which is kind of good, I guess. Um, so um, <clears throat> yeah, I just made it down here, and uh, I guess I'll just you know, do a strip tease for you and um, take all my clothes off so that, you know, you're, you've got something to be entertained by. Just kidding. This t-shirt is too big for me. Um, I'm just making a video because, I don't know, I got nothing else to do. There's it's sort of like I arrived during the downtime. I actually need to go back out to my car and get stuff. But, um, so just sharing my little, um, experience in the hotel. I did want to talk about one thing though <laughs> today, which was that, um, I don't know, for those of you who watched my video earlier where I was talking about um, how I was kind of hoping when I went to the Y that I was going to run into the cute guy. Well, guess what? He was there. The cute guy, the cute young guy that I have the crush on. <laughs> The one that's way too young for me, but that reminds me of my cat with his long black hair um, and his pretty chiseled face. Uh, he reminds me of Shadow. He was there. I was so happy. I thought it was a good sign, actually, that, that he was there when I arrived. Um, he'd clearly been underway with his workout, so I was kind of worried that he was going to leave too soon, and he did. He left in like a half an hour. So normally I would have gone and jumped on the gerbil machine for 45 minutes or an hour or something, um, but it's in a different room than where, where he was. And I wanted to be where he was because <laughs> I needed him to cheer me up. So I um, stayed in the workout room where he was and, you know, did my little checkout thing. But it was weird because I feel like we're weird. Like we don't, I didn't feel like we had as much eye contact as usual. But there was this moment when he was getting ready to go and he was taking um, a pretty long time getting himself ready. And... I wasn't such a wuss. I would have gone to the place where you get your coats and you, your stuff, and I would have walked past him and gone to where I had put my stuff, and I would have grabbed my, you know, my Walkman, my, I mean, my iPod and my phone and my iPad and my everything I take with me to go get on the gerbil machine, which is like a lot of stuff so that I can email and Facebook everybody so I don't get bored. And I, instead of walking by him and creating that opportunity to like talk to him or look at him or get eye contact with him or something, I went on the app machine instead, kind of near him. And then of course he had to leave. Then I went on a long song and dance in my own head about how I sabotage, self-sabotage love relationships in my life. And the whole day, actually, I was thinking about how I have a fatal flaw in this lifetime that I was feeling this morning like I cannot fix. And my fatal flaw is basically, it's the self-sabotaging thing that, that we all have on this planet. A lot of us do. I don't, it's not unique to me. Of course, everyone, you know, self-sabotage is actually a very common thing. It's funny that somebody posted on my Facebook wall, I think it was today, about, a, they, they, they are auctioning off a special crystal. It wasn't a rose. It was like a, a different color. It was pink or peach or champagne. And, um... It was for the purpose of somehow helping you not be self-sabotaging. So it's funny that I realized that um, my fatal flaw, as they would say in a Shakespeare play, is that I self-sabotage potentially positive moments. So say you're you're in a relate I'm in a relationship and I'm having ups and downs with my relationship, and maybe it's gone down and it's in a bad place, and um, 
I'm trying to figure out how to fix it, you know, and get it on the right track. And I'm struggling to figure that out. And I'm energetically correcting it, trying to fix it, trying to get it better, trying to make it so that we're harmonizing. And, you know, then I'll finally get the opportunity where I feel like the other person is open to, to transitioning the going down relationship into going up, and I'll end up blowing it. You know, um, one time I was dating, this guy was madly in love with him, Irish-Italian guy, and um, I was just so in love with him. I would do anything for him, and um, but he was in love with somebody else, and despite how close we got, we got pretty close, um, but I wouldn't sleep with him because I didn't want to ruin the relationship, and I knew that he would break my heart if I slept with him, so I didn't sleep with him, even though I was dying to, and we had a lot of sexual tension between us, but I felt like I just knew as soon as he had me, he'd walk away, so... I was just like, I didn't want to ruin the friendship, so, and I wasn't going to be comfortable with this one night stand friendship with fringe thing with him because I was too in love with him. So I waited for a long time until I felt comfortable being able to sleep with him and be friends afterwards. And, and I finally achieved that place in myself where I could actually sleep with this guy that I was madly in love with and be okay afterwards if he were to, you know, reject me or not just be in love with me afterwards. I don't think he was going to reject me because I was certain that I had created a solid, that we had created a really solid friendship. So, so solid that we were able to overcome the after effects of sleeping together and not um, being in love with each other afterwards. So we achieved that. I was proud of that because I knew that was hard for me because I was in love with a guy and I did not want to have a light, casual, sexual relationship. I was just like wanted the real thing or not, or not a sexual relationship. So anyways, lots of different things happened. It all fell apart later on. It was horrible. It was very painful for me because I really missed him. We were really close and I counted on him as a close friend of mine for a long time. So Later on, there were a few opportunities. He really hurt my feelings before these two later on opportunities really hurt my feelings to the point where I felt like I had to pull away from him so much to get to get control over myself, to get some distance, to pull back. So I wasn't feeling so hurt by him all the time, so I pulled back. And then when I finally did that, that's when he started to come and you know, maybe make amends, and by that time I felt like I had to stay back, because if I was going to reach out to him again, then I was going to put myself in this vulnerable position. So, my fatal flaw would be, you know, holding a grudge too long, um, being so afraid of rejection that I just cannot set myself up for it again. Once I've had my fill of it, I just am done. Even if I could possibly redirect it and not be rejected. I'm so afraid of rejection that I won't even give that opportunity. If I think there's a slightest chance of getting rejected again and I can't take it anymore, I'll just, I'll walk away. Um, and then my insecurity that I can still have even at age 51, or back then I was a little younger, but you know, middle-aged. Um, the three of those things combined set me up for just screwing up these pot potentially good moments, you know? I mean, I don't know what would have happened with those moments. I don't know because I because I veered myself in the other direction. I couldn't. I was like, it was like I was about to come together, but then I was so afraid I ended up screwing it up. So, you know, right or wrong, I mean, I don't know, but I view that as a flaw of mine that I felt today that I was never, ever, ever, ever going to get over in this lifetime, no matter what the stakes. That I would just choose that same course of fear and, and walking away. And this kid at the Y really reminds me of that part of myself, you know, where he's just so cute and I'm just feeling too insecure. I can't say hi to him. I mean, what do we have in common? I mean, nothing. Basically, he would have to be, except that we work out and um, live in the same area, I think that he would have to be really into my weirdo spiritual stuff with the galactics and he'd have to be a really deep seeker of the meaning of life and we would have that in common. Um, without that, we have nothing in common. He's he's the same age as my daughter. My daughter and I have lots in common because she's a girl. <laughs> but, um, so, because, you know, what else would we talk about? You know, really, I mean, that's the whole thing about age. It's not like the age is important, but it's the phase of life that's important. Now, if this 
if he were, if he happened to be someone who was pursuing the understanding of life and had a very open mind, then we could talk about lots of stuff. But uh, anyway, so actually, even though he is like my crush at the Y, it's nice to have a crush at the Y because it gets me over there. You know what happened was that when he left, I jumped on the gerbil machine because I knew that if, as long as he was there, I wasn't going to get it yet. <laughs> I mean, I did my sit-up and <clears throat> my ab routine, but, or I made up abs, ab stuff. I actually did some new things I've never done before with this big ball, weight ball. But once I got on the dribble machine, I was on there for like 22 minutes, and without him in the building, I was like, eh, whatever, who cares, I'm out of here. You know, without him in the building, I didn't care to be there. Uh, I lost my motivation. And then I realized I should find somebody else to have a crush on at the Y. And then I actually stopped at, you know, where he works on my way, because I go there anyway, a lot anyways, but now I feel like when I go there, because I know he works there, like, it's become all about him. So I just thought I'd try one last time to see if, I don't know what, I'm ridiculous. So I stopped there, but he wasn't there, so I, I, I left and headed down here. So the point of this video is basically that um, it's my hotel ramble about the thoughts I had earlier about this young guy who is so gorgeous who reminds me of my kitty. Oh, this is another. <laughs> I actually thought to myself that I, I came up with something to say to him that I could initiate a conversation with him. This is what it was. I was going to say if he was going to be there at the store and I was going to, and if he was going to wait on me or, you know, ring me up or whatever, I was going to say something like, um, uh, you know, were you at the Y earlier? I saw you at the Y earlier and I was glad to see you there because my cat just passed away and you remind me of my cat. <laughs> that's, that's the best I could come up with. And if that wasn't, if that, if I was too awkward and scared and pathetic to say that to him, because I think he's awkward too, so it's like just uncomfortable. It's just too much discomfort for both of us. Um, the other thing would be to say to his stepmom, who I had a long conversation with one day, about how great he is, and he, you know, how just like he's cool and chill and not and mature, I guess, and not a child. Um, I was going to tell her that I was happy that he was at the Y because he reminds me of my kitty because he's so gorgeous and he's that black hair, <laughs> and let her tell. Him. <laughs> See how desperate I, I need a crush on someone because I'm a, I'm a crushaholic. I'm a loveaholic. I still am. I guess it's something, you know, I have control over it. But um, at least I'm crushing on someone, you know, impossible who's too young for me. <sighs> it was kind of funny when I had the conversation with the stepmom, though, because she was sort of talking about him in such a positive light. And, you know, I almost it almost was like it just, I don't know, anyway. I might have mentioned this in a video. I don't even want to say it again. It's too embarrassing. But, um, yeah, I'm here at this weekend, and I'm kind of secretly hoping that I find someone to have a dance crush with or someone to just have a romance with tonight, even if it's just on the dance floor, because um, I need to rebound from the loss of my cat. Because earlier today, I mean, I don't feel this way now. I'm fine now. I bounce back. But uh, because the sun gave me some happiness, but this and the boy, the kid, um, and I just bounced out of it. But earlier, I was feeling like I was just done here. You know, I went on that rant earlier this morning about life and this being a game and this hard, difficult game. And then today, I was just like, wow, I'm never going to get over my my love hang up. I I can just feel it so deeply in me. I'm not getting over that. Not now. And so if I can't get over that, then what do I have to be excited about? You know, what do I have to live for that really matters to me? I mean, if I was going to find my dance partner, I would be thrilled. But I'm starting to feel like I'm never going to find him unless I find him at this weekend. You know, it's like if I find him at this weekend, then that changes everything. But if I don't find him at this weekend, then I don't know, you know, I don't really care. I mean, whatever, I I care. I just was like, well, I guess I'm done, you know. Part of, okay, what I'm just saying is that part of me felt as done as my friend Cat feels. My, the, the how some of the uh, old cronies that live up in Belfast who are just sick and tired of trying to 
work and slave and are old and tired and they all want to get off the planet. And I felt like I was like, I want to get off the planet too. My cat is gone. I'm never, I'm not, I don't have anyone to love. My kids are growing up and, you know, I have this dance performance to do with a really great dancer, partner, teacher, but, you know, I don't feel like I'm a priority at the studio, so, you know, I'm waiting for this dance to be over, basically. And, I don't know, it's like I was done with the game. I'm like, wow, I don't want to play this anymore. I don't want to play anymore. I'm done. You know, I've done the best I can do. I found my crystal. That was the biggie. I shared it. And, um, I, like, I'm good. You know, not not bad. It's all good, but I just feel done. Like I'm, I don't want to play. You don't have to play cards forever. Um, but I bounced out of that, and I don't feel that way. I think it was just a reaction to losing the kitty and being alone in the house and just feeling weird, you know. And then just being ridiculous about this young guy who's cute, and just being ridiculous about that, and not mature at all and not an adult and then just realizing that in some way I will always have this stupid part of me that just cannot get a handle on my sense of confidence where I can just you know make fun of myself in an awkward situation I can do that I can do that in other situations but not when it comes to like you know I just feel like I should get over things a little better and part of me just chooses to keep a grudge instead of finding the love that's my that's my fault I don't always do it it's just very subtle small levels now that I do that but I still can do that and um, that's not something that's very good I don't think that's very good of me I shouldn't do this this is gross right <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, I should get dressed and get ready to go dancing. I am going to try to find my true love and dance partner here at this swing weekend that I drove down to for the sole purpose of dancing tonight. And, <clears throat> well, if I don't find my perfect dance partner tonight, then at least I'm hoping to have some good dances. So, um, that's where I'm at, and um, I hope you guys are having a good night, and I do love you guys. I mean, I love having my internet relationship. It's so funny. I feel closer to my internet people that I've never met than I do to um, anybody else besides my children. Isn't that funny? So, <laughs> we're like all BFF. <laughs> so, no boob action on this one, because um, this one's got to go on YouTube, I guess, and I don't know. I'm all, like, weird. So, um, thanks for watching, guys. You know I love you. Big kiss. Mwah. I'll let you know how the night goes. Say a prayer for me that I find the right guy. It would be so nice. Okay, talk soon.